Welcome back. This is Inside Politics here on KTN News. Now, Kiharu, member of parliament, Ndindi Nyoro, is a free man, was a free man earlier this week. This after police failed to prosecute him following his arrest Monday night in Muranga town. His lawyers confirmed that they managed to secure his release after calls to what has been termed as senior government officials, but with this file said to be, was said to be forwarded to the DPP for review. We did uh, try to take a look at this, and Aki Sondera took a look at the events around his arrest and release. Is the state, is the state breathing new political life into the first-time lawmaker? After spending the night at the Muranga police station cells, Kiharu member of parliament Ndindi Nyoro left the Muranga law courts a free man after the prosecution confirmed that indeed they had no case against him. A public altercation between him and nominated MP minor commander that resulted to chaos at the fundraiser they were both attending at the Gitui Catholic Church Sunday being the main basis of his arrest. <laughs> An arrest that led to chaos in Muranga town where supporters lit bonfires and caused mayhem in protest Monday night. Nyoro and his ilk largely termed this as persecution for his unwavering support for Deputy President William Ruto. This once again bringing to the fore the ongoing vicious politics between the two factions of the Jubilee Party, that is Kieleweke and Tangatanga. Lakini Matiangi, Naki Bisho, Naiji, how what to a Mesidwa Nakazi? Natana Nataka Kuambia. Hawa wa mama wa kiharu, hawazai watu abao sio wakakamavu. Being a big anti-handshake crusader, Nyoro's arrest saw his supporters gather in perhaps a show of might for his competitors, with claims that the government is now targeting politicians allied to the deputy president, William Ruto. We will not work with a government that is bent on harassing, inciting, arresting people without any offense. We prepared and presented before court, then the matter cannot proceed. Nyoro's arrest and his lawyer Irungu Kangata's confirmation that it took calls to powerful government officials to secure his release, once again an indictment on the police who are accused of being the hand that is often used to settle political scores. <laughs> And as he sends a message of defiance. I may look small, I may look uh, downtrodden, but I want to tell them, Mimi siyo mutu wakutisatishwa hivo, na watu wakiharu, hawajui viyogozi wakutisatishwa. Could this arrest have emboldened Nyoro? Could he be using it to position himself in Muranga County politics? And with the DPP still reviewing his file, is it celebrations just yet? Akisandera, KTN News. Okay, so, so that story um, led us into some more political discussions inside central Kenya. And Dean Yore is uh, one of those members of parliament, Dishma Suat, seen to be uh, supporting the deputy president, William Ruto's 2022 presidential bid. Remember, central Kenya has seemed to be divided into two, those supporting his bid and those against. Um, is this uh, simmering volcano in that mountain area of central Kenya? Um, a show of things to come or what's really happening be, be behind the scenes in terms of uh, uh, power vacuum, so to speak, in central Kenya, that is speaking post Uhuru Kenyatta in 2022. Is, is this what's happening? Well, you, you know now this, uh, it requires a context first. Number one, we've warned that the church, and especially the Catholic church, times are above number, that they shouldn't allow politicians to convert a congregants into voters. Now, the reason why the churches this Sunday morning are very popular is simply because for politicians, they will go there to see voters, mm -hmm. while the parish priest is actually seeing uh, people want to repent and uh, make their way to heaven. But for some reason... And this they, was a Catholic church. Yeah, this was a Catholic Put church, and I'm a member of the Catholic church, so it's uh, thoroughly embarrassing that... Uh, and my cousin is a Catholic priest, so it's very embarrassing that uh, the, the priest, uh, the clergy, the pastors, can allow politicians <coughs> to go to church, not because they want them to experience the Damascus moment, but because they're interested in the cash that they're carrying. 
I didn't know that's really the crux of this matter. Because we understand that Commander was carrying a trash from President Kenya. We don't know for a fact whether that's the case. Because again, we know politicians love going around town saying, Nimetumana Fulani, Nimetumana Fulani, Nimetumana Fulani. All right. And then for says that because it's the local. Let me interrupt you a bit. We are trying to sort out your audio, it's not very clear. Um, Brian, as, as we do that, sure. what do you read from, from what, what <laughs> happened there between Minor Commander and Dindi Nyoro? Yeah, in the I think, bigger picture. Sure, I think this is a, is a clear depiction of the division between the party itself, the biggest party, as you rightly put it before. And uh, first of all, I always say that when you see these cracks and uh, these kind of revolts within a political party as a, as a tool, it shows the kind of uh, democracy impended within that particular party. And to me, I always say democratically that's healthy because all discerning interests, all discerning voices are able to come out and the people are able to see what leaders stand for within that particular vessel. So for me, I think it's the right thing to do for people to express themselves within a particular party. But the problem is how to hold uh, the center of that partic particular party to a situation where it is able to live uh, in a sustainable way and they serve the interest that it was set to serve. For Jubilee, I think to me it's a litmus test whether it's going to hold itself until 2022 mm -hmm. as a unified front to counter uh, another ununified front with right. NASA here for this matter because NASA disaggregated, disaggregated a long time ago. So it, can, it's, it cannot call uh, the, the cattle right. to, uh, Jubilee uh, black. So for this case, I think uh, Dindi <coughs> is that uh, brand of politicians who have come out strongly nowadays mm -hmm. as uh, young energetic leaders within central Kenya to get a space within the very much crowded space within central Kenya because in, a standard, uh, in the standard today they are talking about that vacuum, that lacuna within uh, the kingship, kingpinship of central Kenya, where they are talking about uh, some uh, big names which right. perhaps are supposed to be groomed to occupy the position of President Kenyatta once he exits. Okay. And therefore, for Dindi to do that, I think as a politician, he's also having those ambitions or perhaps, you know, elevating himself to that level where once uh, Moranga sits down to consider a leader within the bigger scope of Moranga as a county, he can stand out and be counted together with the other big masses such as Bona, Mwangi, right. Iria, etc., etc. Ishmael, mm. the manner in which the state handled this, what, what, what do you think about that? Because he was... Um, he was waited. Uh, the police, <coughs> the police were waiting for him outside at a TV station after yes. after a show. I mean, um, first of all, what is your take on on, on that, on that, uh, how the state handled this, and are they making him, making his name for him? Thanks, Ben, for welcoming me to the show again. Now, I, I, first of all, I must say that it looks like uh, Didi Nyoro is uh, is is building himself to be to to appear to be a very intelligent politician at a young age. Uh, and I think the citizen media, you know, uh, when he went to the media sh you know, show and then he holed up himself there, I think it was all uh, drummed up. I think Ndindi knew what he was doing and probably he was cooperating with several other arms of the government within the police so that it appears that he's really a man who is very important and, and he needs to be looked for even in the media house for information. If the police want to arrest me now or any of these panelists, they will walk through the gate and actually carry any of us out. They have those powers under the law. But you see, they just allowed him to sit inside there and then keep talking through the media, through TV, and, and you know, it became important. So, you ask me whether the government handled this correctly and properly. Yeah. What, what, what I think I want to say is first and foremost, actually there was no reason to arrest Ndindi Nyoro. Mm -hmm. There was no reason, absolutely. Ndindi Nyoro was in his Keharu constituency. You could have arrested him anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but, but what I'm saying, service, he, in right? the first place, why, were you, why do you want to arrest him? He was in his constituency. He ought to be informed that uh, I mean, I'm sure he went there either invited or as a person from the, as a resident. Mm -hmm. So the issue of a honorable commander going there, whether to do anything, whatever he was going to do, he's got to be courteous and inform the church plus the member of parliament that I will be here as of right because of ABC. So for Ndindi Nyoro to 
you know, bring commotion and say you are demeaning me in my own area, I don't think there was a reason for any police officer to interfere. In fact, that was a matter which was supposed to be handled within the priesthood and the, the you know, the, the church compound, mm -hmm. not for the police to go there. Therefore, I think all this was orchestrated by Ndindi Nyoro and his team so that he can come up. Now, my brother has just mentioned that he's trying to build himself to kinship or something. I think that is still too far. Ndindi Nyoro is trying to show himself out or to bring himself out as a capable politician who can contest as a member of parliament and who should be considered well, when the, when who should be considered when the the Tangatanga -tanga people want to find somebody in Mount Kenya, they they will try to reach out to Ndindi Nyoro. Mm. But he's still too far for, to be named as a king you know, somebody. Future. In the future. Okay. All right. Okay. Remember, Kiharu is a constituency that also produced one Kenneth Njindo Matiba. Anyway, Bonawakili, what is your take on, on what's happening there? First, first of all, we go back to the whole the British question of church and politics. Where does the role of the church end and where does the role of politicians begin? And as a Catholic, I must say that uh, I am not happy, I was not happy when I saw what was happening at the altar because I believe we go to a church not to show who is richer than the other because if we wanted to know who is the richest man, we would have just asked every congregant to bring their bank statement. It would have been the easiest way. Or if we wanted to know who is the biggest political muscle, we would have asked IBC to give these people certified uh, results of their elections, the, 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 the latest elections. Mm -hmm. But that being that, what I would like to say is this. So who it dropped the ball? It is was it bad manners by the church or no, bad no, no. manners by we the political We should not shift leaders. this thing to the church first of all, Ben. When you are called to be a leader, it means you are held on higher integrity and moral turpitude. So, if you are a leader and you go to a church, it is expected that you behave like one. Right. Two, the church ought to know that we should not, the church should not be put right. in a corner whereby it has to decide between politicians. Good and the other thing that I need to come back to the police. One, in the run up to the 2017 elections, it is such a mistake that made Hassan Joho bigger than life. It is such a mistake that created Babu Owino, who is bigger than Nairobi. And the other thing that we must ask ourselves, the police should not be pushed or should not be thrown into a corner where they have to choose between Tangatanga -tanga and Kieleweke. A few months ago, Wambugu Ngunjiri interrupted a meeting organized by a cabinet secretary. It went, nobody questioned. A few weeks ago, Wambugu Ngunjiri, the same guy, went to a meeting organized by a, a group known as the Nua Mama. Nobody asked a question. What we need to ask going forward is the police should remain a political. They are the institution that is there to hold the nation together. Their slogan is Utumishi Kwawote. They should not look like they are being used. And the other thing I would like to question is, is there somebody in government who is being used as a political strategist for one of the groups? <coughs> because when you see these deliberate blunders, it shows to the extent that there is somebody who is being used as a strategist, a proxy strategist. Because then, if I want to arrest, as Wakili has said, I'll just walk in and arrest you. I don't come there and cause a star, wait for people to be anxious for two hours and then disappear. Mm -hmm. These are the things that makes people believe or makes people think Dindi Joro is bigger than life. Did you see what happened after he was released by court without being charged? The role of Kier was there. When he was arrested, Moranga, some streets were brought to ashes. So the question is, do we really have the capacity to handle politicians? And then the other constitutional issue is, where did that Kaparo committee disappear to? The one on national cohesion <laughs> and integrity. Because it has disappeared, we no longer know whether it is. Right. It's a different Good point. questions. Let's get uh, very quickly in, in, into the politics of this, this much. Um, the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has tried to broker peace or try to um, you know, read the riots act to these members of parliament and politicians in central Kenya to stay off the politics, uh, focus on service delivery for now. But it's not working. What does, it, what, what does that say coming in the light of those protests, if you can call them that, that we saw in, uh, in, in Muranga town? Well, you know now the, the, the behavior of uh, Didi Nyoro, and for anybody to imagine that uh, Didi Nyoro now has become bigger than life, that is uh, the highest level of uh, political naivety. 
from 1963, we know that they established political leaders would always uh, pick first-term MPs and use them as uh, special purpose vehicles. And the list is as long as your arm. So obviously, there is uh, an established politician, probably in Kieleweke or in uh, Tangatanga, who is using uh, Ndindi as a special purpose vehicle to create a bit of a ruckus within the constituency. And uh, you would even uh, notice that uh, on that particular night, this, um, there was a small demonstration, but you know it was uh, blown out of uh, proportion that now it's become a big demonstration that now Didi Nyoro is uh, playing in the league of um, uh, Stanley Njido Matiba, which I think also that is uh, stretching it uh, too far. So as it is, there is uh, obviously jubilee in government, there is jubilee in opposition, and then there is jubilee proper, which is being done by the president. And I think what the president has done, having given them uh, a warning and told them to stick to the development agenda, and all of them have ignored that, I suspect he's, uh, let them, he's told them now you can go on your own motion and uh, fry. But you know that reflects uh, poorly on the leadership of uh, Jubilee. Because if uh, President Kenyatta wants uh, to deliver on his uh, Big Four agenda, then he needs to be sure that the Jubilee is uh, dancing and singing from the same hymn book, they're in the same room, and doing the same lyrics at the same time. But now you have the Jubilee in opposition and uh, Jubilee in government, all of them focusing. One is focusing on succession and one is uh, focusing on development. But President Kenyatta, for some reason, is unable to bring that into order. And you see, the longer we have um, these two jubilees uh, pulling in two different directions, mm -hmm. the person who gets to suffer is not President Kenyatta or is not uh, William Ruto. The person who gets to suffer is uh, Murah back in the village. Because you would expect that the altercation between Maina Kamanda and Didi Nyoro is probably an issue of uh, economics. Right. You know, Didi Nyoro says that uh, he's an economist. You would expect that uh, he's arguing with this gentleman he refers to as his grandfather on an issue of economics or now we can use uh, some interventions to take Kenya to the next level. No. But he's not doing that. So, and also for Dini Nyoro to say that uh, he's been uh, persecuted or prosecuted, I've, uh, I've taken time to go through the National Assembly to find out whether he's got any signature contributions to take Kenya to the next level. So okay. I've not found anything. Actually, mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at their contributions, mm -hmm. is a contribution and minor commander probably they play at the same level. Never mind that one is a grandfather and the one is a grandson. <laughs> Ish Ishmael, <coughs> yes, sir. who is to blame for this so-called division? Is it William Ruto for having um, presidential ambitions in 2022? Is that, is that a crime? Is it, is it the president for wanting these people to stop politicking, yet they are politicians, and he wants to focus on the legacy. Or is it the politicians themselves just being having bad num bad money? I don't. I think you've limited me to determining. But yes, yes. Thank you. I think the law is to blame. You see, everybody has become smart now. Kura Court has gone ahead, and Punguza uh, Mzigo, and uh, Kenyans have come up, and they know that you know we have certain rights as a people. We can freely picket, demonstrate. Members of parliament have been uh, emboldened because of the constitution. They know they can tell the president anything as long as he does not, you know, breach the law. So handshake to me and the president of the republic and Uhuru, I mean, I mean uh, Raila Odinga and uh, William Luto. William has every right, by the way, to do what he's doing in whichever manner he can do it to ensure he captures the uh, presidency in 2022. But you see, Kenyans are smart and clever. They know. Uh, He's going to pass through and behind people to try to stabilize this area and try to popularize himself, you know, on the other one. So I don't think he's in a mistake and he's to blame. Mm -hmm. But Kenyans, my focus is Kenyans have now become smart. We know so well the handshake was not uh, bread and butter. It has its own, you know, hiccups and its own disadvantages. Right. But where we are going is... We want a country where everybody feels like he actually owns the country and not just a few of them. So I cannot put blame on uh, William Ruto just for these divisions we see. I think what has come out clearly is the politicians in 2017 who were on the top are finding themselves on the bottom. So I think, and they do not know specifically how to navigate those waters because most of them are used to being in the government. Now Raila Odinga has gone over the other side and actually caused uh, right. positions and roles to, to change. So okay. it's too early to blame you know, one we'll, specific individual. We'll get into there. the handshake after, after this uh, ca break coming up, but Bran, very quickly. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> what's happening in central Kenya? Is it, how bad is it for Jubilee? 
Uh, I think it's not it bad normal? for Jubilee and it's normal. But uh, I just want to revisit the issue that he had talked about in terms of uh, the president that we had uh, inquired about his riot act and to members of parliament to stop politics and concentrate on <coughs> development. The president went further to elevate one of his cabinet secretaries, Banama Tiengi, to spearhead development agenda with an idea of actually moving the big four agenda forward. That seemed to have isolated uh, the DP, who was actually on rampant in terms of moving across the country uh, in the name of launching projects. Whether it was true or not, that's a debate for another day. But this did not seem to rub him in the right way because somehow it opened now a discourse. It opened uh, the Pandora's box where there came two divisions of Tanga Tanga. And that's where actually that's where the Tanga Tanga Kelewake division came, came through because you could see there were some members who were always inclined uh, towards the DP in terms of when he's moving around the country and those who were always with the president. And therefore, it's unfortunate that came at that time. But... <clears throat> As he said, it's not the problem of the DP to go around publicizing his popularity. Mm -hmm. That's within his political realm. But the problem came through the Constitution when the two, the president and the DP, were tied together all the way until uh, we realized that there is no separation between these two. The DP can go for the presidency even... That's a good thing. It's not a problem, is it? It uh, is a problem because uh, this ought to be a ticket. Wait okay. a minute. This ought to be a we, ticket. We need to, we, we need, we, we need to go for a break. We'll yeah. come talk about the, the handshake. But, yeah, but, but you need to tell me mm -hmm. what the solution you think is for this Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga. Or is it normal? Politically? One, we have to ask ourselves where are the problems. The problems are two. There is the succession in the national in the national arena, mm -hmm. and there is the succession within Mount Kenya nation. That is that is the first problem. The second problem is the post-handshake constipations in our political system. There are people <laughs> who are used to being at the top of the food chain. But when right. Tinga came into the system, okay. there is a constipation within the system. But the cure is this. <laughs> right. The cure is just one. If today Uhuru Kenyatta, <clears throat> after calling the riot act, mm -hmm. was to call for a parliamentary group meeting and uh, draw the line in the sand that if you cross here, this is what will happen, and activate the party organs. Have you ever seen or covered a Jubilee Disciplinary Tribunal? I have never seen one. So those are the things. What the, where, where the ball has been dropped is at the president as the leader of the political party called Jubilee from calling for that PG, and also the party itself, All the right. organs within the party, from disciplining its members. All we right. have seen Jubilee members saying anything and everything. At times you wonder whether these members of parliament are in government are they in opposition? <laughs> because at times you need to really read their names so that you know where they are. But from very all they talk, intriguing <laughs> issues ben, coming ben, out ben, in that ten seconds, please. You know, Mti has said that uh, when uh, Dr. Matienge was given a particular position to chair a cabinet committee, that that was uh, the nexus, the creation. That's when Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga sprang up. I think nothing can be far from the truth. That's really erroneous. Right from the time uh, they assumed the second uh, office, the presidency, that's the president and his deputy. Mm -hmm. That's when you saw Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga. So we cannot start blaming uh, Dr. Matiangi for doing his job. And then you claim Matiangi. that uh, that's the creation of uh, Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga. That's number one. Then number two, the people who can uh, bring stability to Jubilee, it's not even a, a parliamentary group meeting. It's the two party leaders. You know, we've said times above number that we don't have political parties in Kenya. We have special purpose vehicles. The two people with huge political capital, President Kenyatta so, calls Kileweke so, to order, and Ruto calls that. So the problem is order. the division is between the two. It's the two. Because you see, all between these the other two. people, all these other MPs, members of the National Assembly and uh, senators, right. they're special purpose vehicles. Okay. When they're told jump, they ask how high. They don't ask how <laughs> high. Thoughts, we will come <clears> back to take a look at the handshake after this commercial break very closely related it is 18 months since that march 18 20, march 9 2018 uh, cooperation deal between president uhuru kenyatta and odm leader raila odinga how has it worked for the last 18 months it was supposed to be the ultimate political ceasefire 